So think of the last time you spent a lot of time or some time waiting in a line. When and where was it? How many people were there? How often a new customer would join the line? How many servers or channels of service were there? How long did it take to process customers or things like this? Please answer this. And uh, you may go to an organization and they expect you to, to uh, solve a problem that involves lines. That way you can use everything that uh, you learn here. <clears throat> so here are some other examples that I have. Uh, of course, this is before COVID, waiting in line for checking at the airport. Sometimes these lines are very frustrating, um, but you see that they have provided enough of space, which means they, they could have, they kind of expected this number of people waiting here. Sometimes it's just by experience, uh, and it's okay if people uh, get frustrated. Sometimes it's not okay. And uh, uh, for example, it's a system, it's a computer system, and it, the system will crash if you don't have enough space or enough memory for the packets of information that are coming in. This is a store, you had a lot of examples here, and uh, a bank <clears throat> waiting in line for a car wash or getting gas. That's another example here. You have, uh, for example, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight servers, maybe the gas pumps, um, or at a hospital. We see a lot of a lot of examples for this. Uh, I have actually designed some questions that involve COVID, that are COVID related. Uh, you will see them later on during the class. Um, for a hospital that wants to um, plan for accepting uh, COVID patients, for example, that the rates are going up, what should they do? How many servers do they need? How many nurses do they need? And then you can think of a maintenance station or a hangar uh, where airplanes wait in line to get uh, service, maintenance and service. Um, that's another example of a queuing theory or uh, waiting in line to vote, right? Or as I said, uh, there could be a server and packets of information wait in line to be processed uh, by that server <clears throat> or requests or, an, or in an information system. For example, think of an organization or a company that has a maintenance department. All the other departments send maintenance request to that department. So there you can see a line forming and then uh, you can use queuing theory to answer the questions that I just asked. Um, all right, so that's basically an intro to what is the application of queuing theory and uh, why is it important? So now we get into more depth. Uh, so our goals, after, after we model and study a queuing system, we are trying to find the time that servers aren't busy, expected number of customers present in the queue uh, so that you can accommodate them, expected time a customer spends in the queue so that you can inform them about that time, uh, the probability distribution of customers waiting time, then how many servers we want we, we are also interested to answer questions like this. How many servers, uh, if we want to make sure that 99% of customers do not wait in line more than 10 minutes, right? Uh, for example, there is, there is a case or more than five, five days, for example, for aircraft waiting for maintenance, because that's going to mess up the flight schedule. All right. Uh, you want to see how many servers you want so that the probability of waiting more than 10 minutes is less than 1%. <clears throat> so in queuing system, we are doing two things. One, we are analyzing the exist an existing queuing system uh, by answering these questions or finding uh, these values. We call these operation characterization. Uh, we are characterizing the operations by answering these questions. 
And uh, we are also designing a system. Uh, when you say how many servers there should be, uh, how many checkout lines there should be, you're basically designing a system. So we're going to study, we're going to look at queues from both perspective, perspectives. So any queuing system, its behavior, when I say the behavior of the queuing system is basically how long the line gets or how long do people wait in, in lines and things like that. Uh, when I talk about the queuing system's behavior, it is affected by these things, input or arrival process, output or service process, and queue discipline and methods used by arrivals to join queues. So whenever I say arrival, I mean customers, jobs, emails, any maintenance requests, airplanes, anything that enters the, and waits in line, that's an arrival. So we are going to have a few assumptions um, throughout the chapter. Uh, these assumptions sometimes are not um, practical or not true, but uh, we are assuming, we are making the assumptions so that the model is uh, simple enough for us to solve it. And, uh, and by the way, you will see that uh, you need to understand queuing theory before you use, uh, before you learn simulation. Some of you have already learned simulation, but here you see some theories behind it. <clears throat> In general, we use simulation when queuing theory, uh, when the system is too complex for, so, and too complex and we cannot use these queuing systems that we learn here, MM1, MMS. When it's more complex than that, then you uh, use simulation. You resort to simulation. So one of the assumptions is that um, we will not have bulk arrivals. So what is a bulk arrival? It's like, uh, it means one arrival at a time. Or no more than one. So at, um, so you can't have, for example, five people arriving at 7 uh, p.m. You, if you look at exactly 7 p.m., uh, there can be only one arrival. But if you look, if you think of a restaurant, for example, you see that uh, four customers enter together. So that is bulk arrivals. But here in the systems, we assume that that's not the case. And those four, four customers that enter, we assume that they are, they are not arriving at the exact same time. We are assuming that there is like a one second difference between them, between their arrival, all right? And then arrivals are not affected by the present number of customers, which is not the case in two cases. The first case is called the finite source model. For example, uh, think of an airline that has uh, five aircraft. This is one aircraft. I forgot how to uh, draw aircraft. I used to. I hope this is acceptable enough. So they have five of these. Five aircraft. And when, when all five are under maintenance, obviously you will not have any arrivals or if they just, if, if you just repaired and overhauled all five, you don't expect to see a uh, new aircraft coming in, right? So because the population or the source uh, is finite, having all of them served or uh, depending on how, what number of them are being served, that affects the arrivals. So we don't have that in the models that we study. <clears throat> Another case is when customers bulk. 
when customers bark, uh, that means the person sees that there is a huge line and they decide not to join the line, which is the case in a lot of uh, applications. You try to go to a store or a restaurant, you see a lot of cars waiting, uh, so you bark, which means you drive away. You decide not to join the line. And we will, later on, we will see that we assign a probability distribution to describe the time between arrivals. So what we record from customers is the time between arrivals. <clears throat> and, the, and another thing that affects the queue's behavior is the output or service process. Uh, it's basically the, the time that it takes to serve each arrival, or the time to serve each customer, the time to prepare each customer's coffee, the time to uh, do maintenance on each airplane, um, or the time to uh, take care of each patient in a, at a hospital. And this, this process is independent of the number of customers present in the system. So this is another assumption, which means, for example, if there are a lot of uh, customers waiting in line, that will not make the server that will not encourage the server to work faster. We assume that their service time is independent of the arrival. And these servers are working in parallel and they can work in series too. If they're working in series, we use different types of distribution. We will see those. And then we have a queue discipline. This basically means how customers are picked from the line. The first discipline obviously is first come, first serve, um, which makes sense, which is the case for most of the queues or lines. Next one is last come, first serve. Uh, so the last customer, the last arrival that entered the system will be served first, unloading uh, products from a truck the last, or when I grade papers back before COVID, when, when I would uh, collect the papers, the last person who turned in their uh, test, then I would grade that one first, right? Because that would be on top. So this one came last in papers, but I will grade it first. <clears throat> products on a truck and etc. And then the next one is select in random order, zero. That means just you just randomly pick customers from the line. You have seen that sometimes happening in some, some of the lines. For example, there are 100 people waiting, but they can serve only five more people. So they start calling them in randomly from the people who are waiting in line, sometimes. Um, and then there is a priority queuing disciplines. That means, for example, at a hospital, uh, some patients are, uh, they have more priority. For example, for getting the vaccine, we have a priority queuing discipline. The first were a healthcare professionals and people with underlying conditions. Methods used by arrivals to join queues this is another thing that affects the accused behavior. But again, we have some assumptions here. One assumption is that uh, um, switching and reneging don't happen. So this is when, for example, there are two lines and one of them is longer and you're here then you see that the next line is shorter and you switch to the next line, right? There are two servers here. You see that that line is shorter, you switch the line. That 
we assume that that doesn't happen here. And <clears throat> reneeing means uh, you have waited for, for a while in the line and because it's getting late, you leave the line. And that also uh, does not happen. So this one tries to leave the line. So these are some basic assumptions uh, that we have in queuing systems. And uh, these are the things that basically affect the behavior of the system. So uh, moving forward, we are going to characterize a queuing system by saying uh, what is the arrival process, what is the output process, what is the queuing discipline, what is the population, and whether the system has a capacity or not. Sometimes if the system has a capacity. If you have, for example, more than 10 people in it, you cannot accept more people in the line. They close the doors, basically. <clears throat> so first we characterize the system, then we start using the formulas that we will see for each system to basically answer the questions we saw in the previous slide. 